Hola and welcome to a new episode of the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show. My name is Julio Panicello. I am the dream alchemist at Ruthless Painters, a free range art school and gallery for creative nomads. And on this episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. <laughs> Instead of like introducing a new painting collection and talk about the inspiration and talk about uh, what we will be painting next. So we decided to actually uh, revisit some of the painting collections that we started or we have worked on in 2021. So we have done, uh, I think, 22 painting collections and uh, we are uh, essentially in the middle of the year. So we thought it would be a very good idea to take the opportunity that a lot of people are uh, maybe traveling or reordering or reorganizing uh, their uh, lives. So it, it's usually uh, it, it's a time of the year that uh, involves people making uh, different things. So we just decided that it would be a great opportunity to take advantage of this midpoint in our creative year and revisit some of the sessions that we have proposed ever since uh, January. So uh, we'll also introduce a new concept and a new uh, project, but essentially uh, what we wanted to say, by the way, um, yeah, we're just going to uh, show you some slides about something different. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit of art history themes. Uh, you can find all the uh, episodes uh, on the uh, video format on Instagram. Um, also on our YouTube channel and as a podcast on any popular podcast platform. So you just have to type a uh, ruthless dog and pony show and you'll find uh, tons of uh, episodes um, on any podcast platform, by the way. And you're invited to contact us and make comments and contribute to our, uh, our presentation. So, um, yeah, anyhow, so the idea is to revisit some of the painting collections that we have started since January, essentially the first week of January. We've done 22, uh, I believe 22, I'm just going to check. And um, we thought it would be a good idea to sort of like take um, uh, the opportunity of this mid uh, point in our creative year and then uh, go back to any of the 20, uh, yeah, 23, actually, 23, uh, go back, which makes sense because if the year has 52 uh, sessions, yeah, some, some, somewhat in the middle. So we realize that sometimes people have not been able to take some of our webinars. Sometimes um, we hear that people would have loved to take a specific webinar or do a specific theme and it's really hard when uh, the opportunity passes and then you feel like you know you are playing catch up in a way so for the next three Fridays it's gonna be starting tomorrow the next three Fridays what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, instead of like introducing a new theme we are just going to pr propose um, or help you uh, go back to any of the themes that perhaps you wanted to um, p uh, use a subject or perhaps um, you felt like some of the paintings that you started ever since January were not um, uh, uh, at a stage that you were happy about. And what we'll do is just uh, provide an opportunity to work together because I think that's the beauty about getting together and doing something collectively. It's the fact that we sort of like um, uh, have a, a creative accountability uh, and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we put something out uh, because we are doing it together. So starting with the toasters, that was the very first um, uh, painting collection that we did. Uh, we did portraits of Kamala Harris and some people wanted to revisit those portraits and refine them, elevate them. Um, I personally want to go back to uh, our um, uh, pillows uh, when we did uh, portraits, essentially, or paintings uh, or still lifes of our uh, pillow beds 
or bed pillows. Yes, uh, our pillows essentially. So uh, we did cloud uh, paintings. Um, a very popular uh, series was the the uh, what we call the clown chic. So we uh, had a, a large collection uh, of paintings of clowns, contemporary clowns. Um, another one that I want to revisit is the self-portrait blindfolded. That was a very interesting uh, series. Uh, American Skin, um, when we did versions of portraits by Hendrix, I forgot his first name already. So uh, first dogs, I was just uh, flipping through some of the paintings and I feel like I want to finish the painting of Biden and um, one of his dogs. Um, we've done a lot of oxen paintings. Portraito, that was a series that we only have like very limited amount of paintings, but uh, maybe it, there's an opportunity to kind of like do a potato with some um, uh, toy parts <laughs> for from Mr. Potato. Uh, serious. So anyhow, going down all the way to the Bougainvilleas, we did another session on Monday, um, an in-person session, and uh, it seems like people really loved um, to paint Bougainvilleas. So uh, again, we're going to call this um, Summer Studies, and they're going to be for the next three Fridays. Uh, the time is going to be the same, the price is going to be the same, the format's going to be the same. But what we are going to encourage you to do is to sign up, register, and pick any of the themes that you either felt um, you were not super happy about the stage that you left it, or you want to fill the gap. And you have a few sessions in between the toasters all the way to Bougainvilleas that you really want to incorporate uh, some of those uh, uh, paintings in your collection. We're going to put... Uh, even more emphasis on our roofless gallery because it's getting a lot of views and we have been able to produce a lot of sales for the artist. So this will be a combination of revisiting some of the work, strengthening some of the um, pieces that we either have started or we wanted to start but we didn't get a chance to, and then uh, get some work or offer to get some work up, up in our gallery for sale because people are buying and are interested interested in collecting original artwork. So um, summer studies every Friday starting tomorrow for the next three Fridays, we're going to take an opportunity to do this uh, summer hiatus. Um, people are either traveling, visiting uh, friends and family or doing short trips. It's definitely a different summer than last year. and. We want to make sure that we are here for you and we can paint together live um, and uh, yeah, we can paint together live and help each other either uh, develop, enhance, um, in it, I don't like to use the word improve because the work is always beautiful, but yeah, elevate the work that we either initiated uh, in January uh, 2021 all the way to the Bougainvilleas uh, last week, um, filling the gaps um, uh, and uh, again, elevate, uh, level up the work. So summer studies for the next three Fridays. And um, so what's gonna happen with the Roofless Dog and Pony Show with the next, uh, during the next three Fridays? So we wanted to also introduce a new uh, kind of like a project at the same time that we're going to we're introducing the summer studies uh, for the next three Fridays. On Thursday, we thought the um, uh, the Roofless Dog and Pony Show could be focused on something that it's so important in an artist's um, life or I should say in an artist's uh, in a painter's practice. And that is the idea, the concept, the practice of working on your sketchbook or having a sketchbook. And traditionally, um, I feel like summertime has always been a time uh, when or the season of the sketchbook because people move a little bit more and they're open to more experiences um, and uh, uh, there's more uh, time in the day, uh, there's more um, contact with the outside world. So we thought that this year, uh, this summer, summer 2021, being a summer that feels somewhat much more normal uh, than last summer, it would be a good idea to just do a collective um, 
a sketchbook project of sorts. Uh, we're calling it uh, the Roofless Dog and Pony Show Sketchbook Edition. So here is, or this is what's gonna, uh, uh, how it's gonna work essentially. So we're gonna explain here in the next few minutes um, what's the best way to approach a sketchbook project or a sketchbook idea or premise um, and uh, explain the reason why it's important to do specific things because it's really hard to uh, get the sketchbook sketchbook practice going. Um, I always find that, you know, um, I may pack some um, materials in my bag or go somewhere with some materials and I never find find the right time or the right motivation or even the right materials to pack and it's always a disaster. The intention is great. Um, uh, the next step is to collect the right materials because there's such a thing as right materials for um, sketching. But then I just feel like, you know, time goes by and I haven't done anything or maybe I just buy an entire sketchbook and then I only do like one or two pages, which it's you cannot really call it like a sketchbook practice. A sketchbook practice uh, by definition is to work on your sketchbook every single freaking day. Don't call it a sketchbook practice unless you do something, some doodles, some stick figures at least once a day. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this together because I feel like one of the elements um, that it's missing in my own sketchbook practice is the fact that you know, um, the, the fact that doing it alone, it becomes much more um, difficult or harder. So we're going to do a completely free, it's just going to be free and open, no payment, no registration. We're going to do it every Thursday. We're going to get together remotely. Um, we're going to do a Zoom. We're going to send the Zoom links, which are going to be completely free. But what we are going to ask is that whether you're traveling or not, whether you are doing a shopping trip and going back home after a couple of hours or doing an errand or just like flying for the first time, we're going to explain what materials you need to have always with you this summer, starting also essentially starting this week. And we're going to encourage all of us to do something every day on our sketchbook. Uh, once a week, we're going to get together and we're going to provide a free and open collective image folder where you will be able to upload your sketchbook uh, images. And we're just going to have a mini virtual exhibition of all the work because we feel like one of the the best ways to encourage sketchbook practice is just to have a community that accounts for or it's accountable for uh, actually uh, doing it so um, we don't get an excuse of not doing something uh, and uh, if we have the opportunity to hide it so again starting next Thursday we're gonna get together the Ruthless Dog Company show it's going to take the shape of a Zoom uh, meeting or perhaps it's going to be live and we're going to share uh, curated um, uh, uh, series of sketchbooks that people have uploaded. But we're going to send an email explaining these two new concepts, summer studies every Friday, and then starting a sketchbook, a roofless sketchbook. And we're going to create a hashtag for it in, in case you want to share your images on Instagram, hashtag them with uh, the following hashtag roofless sketchbook um, so anyhow so I'm just gonna bring some images of sketchbooks uh, by uh, famous um, or well-known artists I mean some of them um, thank you yes some of them we stand behind and some of them they have a really dark past but we uh, just wanted to bring uh, examples of what a sketchbook page l may look like just because sometimes we have this idea that we don't find the time or the, mo the the motivation because we think our sketchbook page should look something like amazing this is a Paul Gauguin sketch um, just using charcoal and the materials that you need are essentially a surface and something that draws so and you can do also a digital sketchbook by the way but we'll just share the 
uh, challenges. This is uh, a, a, an image of a Berthe Morisot um, page on her sketchbook. And actually, we were surprised to find out that this belongs to the permanent collection of the LACMA Museum here in Los Angeles. So, um, yeah, they have, they own one of her sketchbooks. So she used color pencils, but you can see the style on the image, um, a sketchbook. It's just an opportunity to uh, capture the truth of a moment. And this is something that's very important. Uh, we've been talking about what truth uh, means in our practice. And sometimes because we are using our observational skills, truth means being in the moment in the moment you're seeing something and then capturing it. So there's something very important about that uh, when you do a sketchbook because um, when you practice or when you exercise your sketchbook practice, um, it does affect your painting. Um, you will find inspiration in your sketchbook and themes and uh, things that you want to talk about visually or express visually. So um, you also are going to develop your observational skills. So there's something about that that it's really beneficial. Sketchbooks are not just something that looks really pretty, which it does, and give you a sense of accomplishment when you actually fill one sketchbook up. Um, they're actually really good ways to improve uh, your painting practice. So we're doing it not only because it's going to be a way of staying connected during this hiatus, the summer hiatus. It's a good way um, of also bringing some uh, creative accountability. So we know that we're doing this together and we want to make sure that we uh, give uh, uh, ourselves accountability, accountability for doing it, but also because it's going to improve our uh, painting uh, practice. Louis Bourgeois, this is a page on her sketchbook, and a sketchbook could be also a hybrid between drawing and scrapbooking, because, you know, scrapbooking is something that we feel very strongly about. It's a good uh, way to uh, not only express yourself, but encapsulate the essence or the emotions of a moment. So a sketchbook could be just drawing or you could just um, have a, a tiny pair of scissors and clip something and put it on your sketchbook. So we thought it would be interesting to find different examples of sketchbook pages. Louis Bourgeois used a combination in this page of images that she collected and then uh, incorporated some uh, gestural drawings or some ideas or some crocus of things that were in her head when she put everything together. Um, sketchbooks are also a really forgiving way of en enhancing your curatorial skills or just kind of like honing in your taste level because this is something that it's quick, it's something that should be quick, uh, um, it's something that allows you to organize, to catalog, to account for. So it gives you a way of visually see how your taste level um, is represented uh, physically and also helps you as well um, enhance, sharpen, uh, improve your curatorial uh, 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 skills. And by curatorial, uh, we mean how you put images together. Uh, this could help you decide what kind of like themes you want to work on when you paint or what do you want to what are you trying to say uh, with your work as well so this is another good example of that page um, this is a Turner this is a page of a William Turner sketchbook and we brought this because uh, we when we think uh, or when we hear William Turner immediately we think oh my gosh this incredible majestic uh, completely ridiculously elegant uh, compositions of color. Um, and yes, they are, but um, on the sketchbook, this is something that uh, feels very simple. It's a study of a landscape. Um, it's not fully developed, which th that's another reason why it's important to uh, practice sketchbooks, because it's a way of giving you confidence. Um, so when you, sometimes when you are uh, in, in the middle of a painting process, there's a lot of pressure to achieve a certain look on your painting. But, um, and, and sometimes that uh, is great, but uh, at the same time, uh, it just requires a lot of effort to make sure that you take that 
uh, process uh, to uh, a good f uh, stage. And, and that takes um, commitment and it takes um, uh, a lot of practice, obviously, but mostly, yeah, commitment and grit and perseverance. A sketchbook is a good way to give you or to fuel your creativity without that huge commitment. And this is a perfect example of what that means. This is a William Turner, uh, but it's a sketchbook page uh, of a William Turner. So it's underdeveloped. It doesn't feel fully finished. It's not like a formal painting. Um, we don't know how long it took, but it just seems something that he whipped up like really uh, quickly. And that's the best part or one of the best parts about uh, uh, exercising a, a, a sketchbook practice, the idea that it gives you uh, room to do something quick without huge commitments, which sometimes uh, is the reason why um, it triggers this uh, procrastination. You know, we feel like something needs to look beautiful and then uh, it becomes harder and harder to finish it. So another example, um, Frida Kahlo, I think she, we want to think that she's very famous not only for her paintings, but she was a very prolific sketchbook artist, or she did a lot of like sketchbooks. In fact, uh, we couldn't find the book, but there's a book that compiles a couple of the, her sketchbooks. And something also very important is to know that you don't have to have a direction, uh, artistic direction when you create a sketchbook page. Again, the concept of uh, staying present and being truthful to the moment, it's very important. The more you're going to try to do a sketchbook page, a page based on memory, the harder it's going to get. So a sketchbook should be something that uh, stays with you. And whenever you feel like you want to sit down and do something in a present way, or being present, then you pull the sketchbook and you do it. If you wait to do something and then you want to do it from memory, it's going to be much harder. And uh, it doesn't mean like that's not a sketchbook page, but one of the parameters, one of the things that we want to talk about is the fact that um, sketchbooking, I guess we're going to call it like that, means uh, to do something in a very specific moment and uh, a present moment, being as true to the moment as you can. It doesn't mean being as true to what you see as you can, because uh, likeness has nothing to do with a good uh, sketchbook practice. So in this case, uh, we love the abstraction that she brought in. And also sketchbooks could be a good um, platform, support, concept to bring together writing and visual expression. So don't feel like you have to stick to visual representation. A sketchbook page could be a written page as well. And it could be a perfect com uh, complement uh, to whatever visual representation. So Frida Kahlo, I think there are a few books published of her sketchbooks, um, and uh, we thought it would be a good uh, a good idea as well. Uh, Paul Cezanne, I mean, yes, very well known painter. We didn't want to bring uh, a lot of the dudes, what we call the dudes, but all of them. Monet, uh, Van Gogh, whatever, whoever comes up uh, as a famous painter, they all had sketches and sketchbooks. There's a different, there's a difference between a sketch and a sketchbook. Uh, and, and we want to go back uh, to this when we talk about uh, what you need for a successful sketchbook practice. But uh, for now, another example, Paul Cezanne, we just think of um, the rhythmically and perfectly harmonious paintings of landscapes or figures or still lives and how um, the orchestration of the brushstrokes and the color palette and the composition, it's also seems unachievable. It just seems like, a, 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 you know, incredibly um, sophisticated. Well, this is a sketchbook and that's a sketchbook that he did on a page and he used, I think, like maybe ink. Um, and, and it's simple, it's underdeveloped as well, and the intention uh, that he wanted was to capture a moment and be truthful to that present feeling. So uh, this is also what a sketchbook page, page would look like. So I think uh, what we're going to do next, uh, we're just going to talk about, I think that's it, yeah, this is another William Turner study on a sketchbook of a cloud. So another example of something quick, simple, um, immediate, 
on the moment. A sketchbook page doesn't have to be a perfect illustration. And this is an example. So let's just talk a little bit about, oops, uh, let's talk about um, what you need for a successful sketchbook practice. And we want you to start, we will start like today. You need a sketchbook and we have, uh, these are my sketchbooks, a couple of them. Um, so a sketchbook, we recommend you start with something small or you get something small because the concept of sketchbooking is to have something with you when you feel you want to do something, whether it's from life or um, you just feel inspired and you want to do something that doesn't require observation. The smaller the, um, the format, the easier it is to have it with you when you need it. The bigger the format, the more complex. So if you're traveling, if you are uh, in a car, if you are in a coffee shop, if you are walking and then you sit on a bench, um, there are more chances that you use your sketchbook if the format is small than if you have a big format. So make your life easy and choose something like five by eight or even smaller if you want. The idea is to facilitate the practice of doing it in the moment. So a small format works. Why is it important to have a bound um, sketchbook? You could also say, you know, grab a whatever piece that you have and you could sketch on a, a bill. You could sketch on a post-it. You could sketch on uh, a leftover piece of paper. Yes, you can do that. But the idea is that when you have something bound, it almost feels like it's pre-published. So having all the books, I mean, all the uh, pages, all the surfaces together on a booklet, on a, uh, on a book, makes it easier to actually um, uh, tell the story, uh, makes it easier to um, document it or archive it in a single spot. You don't have like different papers flying around. So um, that's the second most important thing. Small format, make sure it's bound. Make sure it's in a booklet form. You can use a book and uh, paint on the pages. I've, I've done that with uh, the Havisham Hour. That was a kind of like a, a really crazy form of a sketchbook. But again, make sure that it's bound. Um, and it could be the cheapest paper. The material doesn't matter. Uh, um, well, maybe it does matter a little bit, but yeah, if it's an art uh, sketchbook, it's better because then uh, it's going to stay uh, longer. But it really doesn't matter. So small format bound together. Um, if you uh, are using like a combination of digital and paper, that's a little bit. It requires much more commitment. So we ask you to kind of like stay with one same format all the time and then one same place when you can just combine everything together. The minute that you just move away from that, it's going to be much harder to keep your practice going. So, uh, yeah, I remember doing a summer uh, in the uh, early 1990s. I did a, a summer sketchbook and it was uh, not in a bound format. It was one of those portfolios. It was a, it was kind of like a big por 18 by 24. It was a big portfolio bigger than this double the, double the size on this but um all the papers inside inside were loose i was just keeping napkins and drawing on them keeping uh photographs and doing things with them but the idea was to just have a portfolio uh one of those portfolios with uh, little ribbons and i kept everything together so nothing inside of that portfolio traveled uh, out of it. So everything, the idea of sketchbooking is to just kind of like have everything in one single place. If you decide that uh, this is too much work and you want to do a digital sketchbook and you have an iPad and um, something that you carry with you at all times, then make all your sketches uh, digital. So I think it's just going to be much easier. The idea is to just have uh, or commit yourself and the, the, to, to a practice. And the best way to commit to a practice is to simplify the logistics. And to simplify the logistics, just stick with one format, make sure everything stays together in one single location, whether it's a book or it's in your iPad, and that'll, that'll be much easier. So finally, materials. Uh, so what do you need uh, in order uh, for you to have a successful sketchbook practice? We went down... Just going to do a little bit of like a reset. We went down um, why it's important. Uh, we went down why um, 
we want to do it together to connect with each other and have accountability in order to kind of like keep our practice uh, going. Uh, what it means um, to do a sketchbook. A sketchbook, you can't call it a, you cannot call it a sketchbook practice if you do one page and then that's it. That's not sketchbooking. <laughs> I'm sorry. So you have to commit to regularity and consistency. That's part of why art is so hard. Uh, it's an effort. And we want to make sure that we uh, are here for you to ask you to do this for our community and for an audience because uh, we know it's an effort. And if we do it together, we have better chances to have regularity and, um, and, and commitment to doing it uh, very frequently. So material wise, so again, simplicity, making your life easier, easy. Sometimes we kind of like get overboard. I, I've packed oils to do a sketchbook or watercolor rather because oils, it, it's not very practical. Uh, the idea about a sketchbook is that it, it has to be easy to travel with you. And that concept of traveling could be on a grocery uh, store visit or gross buying groceries grocery shopping or it could be just like uh, taking a flight um, you know across continents it doesn't matter but the idea is portability portability I think so uh, to be able uh, for the uh, support to travel with you the difference between sketchbooking and painting is that when you paint you need sort of like a setup uh, whether you have an easel or not but you need a corner you need a space and uh, when you want to do the practice every day, um, you have to do the ultimate roofless portable uh, material and support, which is a tiny piece of like or a booklet and that travels with you. So, yeah, uh, material wise, they're, they're supposed to also be able to travel with you. That's the point. So commit to something basic. A sketchbook could be this and a pencil and that's it that's that's your material um, the more things you add to the material list the harder it may get to actually do something and I don't know how what kind of like a, um, a malefic um, um, combination of situations happen but when you have everything in front of you sometimes uh, having too much creates a shot off uh, you feel like you know you don't want to you don't want to do it um, so a pencil and an eraser or not even an eraser just a pencil a pen uh, could be great as well have a few um, so what happens if you want to do wet media because we recommend for the sketchbook start with dry media um, so if you don't have a pencil holder just use a small ziplock that's what we do uh, we use a ziplock for our liquids and a ziplock for our sketchbook materials so just uh, a Ziploc, you put this inside. That's why this is a good idea uh, if it's small. And then also drop the pencil and that's your Ziploc sketchbook uh, uh, emergency kit. Uh, but if you want to get fancier, just get like um, uh, a watercolor set. Uh, they cost like less than 10 bucks and a single brush. And then you can find water everywhere. Uh, I mean water everywhere you can just uh, it's easier to kind of have the water and the, but it, it involves like paper towels and then sort of like uh, setting up uh, 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 a setup so it's a little bit more complicated so again the idea is immediacy being present so if you think you have the time to actually get your watercolor set a cup and uh, some water and a brush then go for it but if this requires too much um, Preparation. Your brain is just gonna think of a million, a million excuses not to do it. So, um, yeah, materials. Keep it simple. Dry materials number one. I think it's really important. Whether you have watercolor set or not, just keep a list of uh, a short list of dry materials. Uh, a piece of chalk. Um, if you want or something uh, that feels waxy perhaps so uh, the material stays on the page a pencil if you do a pencil uh, we suggest a very soft pencil because it kind of like gives you more quality of the line so that's a good way to have it um, a very small don't pack like a, a set of like color pencils that have like 300 uh, color pencils in there because I did that I packed that and I packed like a 48 set of markers and you end up using just a few colors. So 
keep the range of colors very limited. It's just going to be overwhelming if you have too many colors at hand. We we know that then it's just going to be a color a, a coloring exercise almost. And the idea is to just capture something either present or emotionally present uh, or intellectually present, but not really uh, have too many colors uh, in order to make it pretty. Sketchbooks are not supposed to be pretty. They're supposed to be messy. They're supposed to be chaotic and raw. I think that's possibly the best um, word to explain uh, yeah, what um, they're supposed to look like. So I think that's all. Um, so summer studies on Fridays. <laughs> and then we're going to start a sketchbook practice uh, starting uh, today. We're going to send an email to everyone. If you haven't uh, signed up for or subscribe to our uh, newsletter, please do so because we're going to explain exactly um, how are we going to do this? What links you need to upload your sketchbook drawings if you want to share them with everyone? And also, which day of the week uh, we're going to get together and talk about our practice, which is going to be Thursdays at 11. The Dog and Pony Show, the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show, is going to be sketchbook edition. So um, thanks, uh, everyone uh, who joined and then left, but then rejoined again. And we're going to share this um, now and uh, any comments any questions we're excited we hope uh that this uh, will provide an opportunity to connect with each other uh in a time when time when we want to connect with uh other people other places and other things so uh thank you thanks claire so much for um sticking around <laughs> that's uh really wonderful and yeah it's just gonna again it's just gonna be free um we're just gonna get together once a week thanks emily yay so we're gonna uh, uh get together once a week um and then uh, either sh or share or not share i mean it doesn't matter but talk about why this is important encourage each other to continue doing it and we'll see how long we can take it. But yeah, at least for three weeks, we're going to do the summer series. And then we're going to see how this sketchbook practice um, unfolds. So thanks again. And uh, we're super excited. Get your materials ready. Get your sketchbook. Summer 2021. Roofless Painters. We're doing this together. All right. Bye, you guys.